so uh, we're going to get started. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, today our talk is called uh, From the Ground Up. We're going to be talking about design systems and uh, yeah, our process for uh, really building one from the ground up, the collaboration between designers and developers, and uh, give you a couple of lessons learned uh, if you're embarking on this uh, crazy adventure. <laughs> Uh, first, though, we're really happy to be here, and uh, thank you to all the, uh, the sponsors. And uh, just to introduce ourselves, uh, my name is Adrian Smith. I'm a digital strategist uh, with uh, the agency Evolving Web, so uh, a design and development uh, full-service agency, really focused on open source. So a lot, a lot, a lot of Drupal, some WordPress too, and uh, again, uh, we uh, really provide a range of services across uh, strategy, user research, uh, UX design, UI design, as well as uh, development, QA, testing, training, uh, so the whole gamut. Yeah, uh, my name is Ria. Uh, I just go by Joe here. Uh, I'm the UX UI designer in the team. Uh, today we're going to talk about design system. Uh, it's pretty exciting, so <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so how many designers in the room? Yeah, great. How many developer? Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Um, anyone has worked with design system before? Okay, that's fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a bit of context about what we're talking about, uh, a bit about our project and uh, the client. So we're from with our regional healthcare authority that really, uh, again, was a bit of an umbrella organization. And uh, they represented over 20 uh, different programs, agency services. So some were really direct care, uh, pediatric care, hospitals, cancer care, mental health, substance use services, everything down to like, hey, I need an ambulance. Can you send one out here? Uh, the other side of it was really more clinical, public health standards, so everything uh, around uh, standards of care for cardiac services, uh, again, emergency care, the Center for uh, Preventable Disease Control as well. So again, in a pandemic context, uh, really important to have these websites uh, up there with up-to-date information and make sure that they look reliable and uh, again, people are gonna go back there. And uh, obviously not to overlook as well, but any uh, type of organization has its HR, its finance, its admin. So overall, we're talking about a huge ecosystem with over 26,000 employees uh, distributed across the province. And uh, again, they had a lot of different objectives, a lot of different users and audiences and needs, but at the same time, as a sort of regional health authority, they did have a brand, an identity, and a sort of strategic vision that was important to really capture and make sure that it was able to sort of cascade over uh, all these different uh, uh, and uh, diverse uh, agencies and services. So fundamentally, they're aligned on their vision, their sort of high level goals, but it was really important also that we sort of had that hybrid brand architecture so that a children's hospital had again, a distinct a sort of look and feel, could really be a coherent with the umbrella organization, but make sure that it was really speaking to a more pediatric, uh, parents-focused uh, audience uh, versus other uh, sites that, again, had their own uh, brand uh, needs and objectives. Uh, but more importantly, what was the ask in terms of our technology stack as well as the sort of uh, strategy and design vision? So they were coming from a SharePoint setup, and uh, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, step back, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, they sort of had this uh, really, really rigid lockdown template. They said, hey, this is great. We have one navigation that everyone is going to be able to use. And uh, what did this lead to? Obviously, uh, things that were not super usable, not super intuitive, really designing for that lowest common denominator meant everything was just um, about our services, no matter what we were actually talking about. Uh, and then because of that really rigid structure and lockdown design, we had a lot of other uh, uh, services and agencies within this organization that were like, you know what, I'm not doing this. We're going to hire an agency. We're going to go with WordPress. We're doing a Drupal thing. We're doing everything else. So again, it really led to an environment that was a bit uh, chaotic and uh, definitely going uh, against the, uh, um, the overall goal of having a coherent brand identity. Um, again, moving from one site to another, you never would have known that it was uh, the same one for some of these are really uh, out there. Uh, um, agencies. 
And then in terms of governance as well, uh, I want to say at the beginning it was uh, decentralized to an extent in the sense that there were just over 500 uh, content editors, all with very uh, different levels of expertise in terms of uh, writing for the web, accessibility, uh, all those sort of standards. At the same time, there were aspects that were very, again, locked down and controlled and pushed back. So it was a very interesting setup, but at the same time, uh, the client, uh, they had done their homework. They did their research, and they sort of had a good uh, and aligned vision on where they wanted to go. So they had already identified a Drupal 10 on a multi-site architecture setup uh, as the sort of solution for them, which was great. And uh, they were very open with us about their challenges around governance at all levels. And uh, the goal for them was to say, look, we have to start somewhere. This is a huge, ambitious project. So let's see what we can do in terms of uh, identifying a pilot site and really try to focus on something that would be scalable in terms of the technical framework as well as the design framework. So this is really fun to hear, although it also sort of opposed us some challenges into where do we start, how do we start, what's going to be priority, how do we define those criteria. Um, uh, but yeah, it was really uh, with the goal of moving to something that was a bit more uh, keeping with the spirit of decentralization that had to happen with so many different programs and agencies, at the same time really resting under that sort of uh, overall brand architecture. And uh, last but not least, accessibility was a really, really important one. So obviously, I think the legal landscape is different uh, depending on where you're living and working, but obviously it was really something that they wanted to value in terms of making it super easy to be compliant, and uh, it really uh, hit uh, their overall vision of making, uh, again, information and content, especially in healthcare, where sometimes it's an emergency. Uh, you really can't afford to not be able to access the information you need. So again, the sort of highest level of a uh, WCAG uh, compliant was uh, where we wanted to go, which meant, uh, again, lots of good reasons to take a very systematic approach. So this was really the ask uh, at the beginning, to have uh, this type of framework for design, information architecture, user experience, uh, and really thinking about it as yeah, a web ecosystem with their brand, their values, their goals, but also, again, being able to sort of cascade down and to be, um, we like to call it flexibility, but with boundaries. We sort of see where that sandbox is uh, ending and uh, making sure that, again, taking a pragmatic approach, we were gone to with a pilot site and sort of following that 80-20 rule, let's make sure that we're not, uh, again, uh, putting perfection as the, uh, the um, objective right away, but thinking a bit more about of all these different websites, how can we sort of extrapolate what are going to be sort of the key functionalities, the features, those components that are going to really be the foundations of our system that can then be used there uh, further on and make sure also that we picked a site that was small enough that we were not going to launch it in <laughs> over a certain time frame. We wanted to make sure that we could really test it as a, the, that the concept was, a, was workable. So uh, for that, it really helped us uh, bring up some criteria, look at all the different candidate sites and say, okay, this one is the right size, has enough functionalities, uh, forms that I have to submit, um, uh, the sort of search functionality we're looking for, et cetera, and uh, also make sure that we can sort of stretch our muscles and see how is uh, the branding gonna be able to come through and really, again, be applied to these different uh, elements. Great, so what? thank you, Adrian. Uh, so what is Design Assistant? Uh, we, it's, you know, it, the technology has been evolved so far. Uh, the, de the definition of design system has been kind of shifted a little bit, and this is how we define design system. So, design system is a set of reusable UI components and their re respective codes, as well as clear guidelines for design development of a limited number of websites. And uh, we did some research early on. Uh, here's some example. IBM had their carbon design system. Uh, the, in, the idea is having a pre pre-built set of reusable UI components, uh, so you don't have to waste your time building the same component for Drupal over and over again. Uh, rather, you spend more time on UX study, UX research, and really spending the resource on the right section of your page. And here's another example, uh, it's been a kind of highlight of the uh, DrupalCon, so the US uh, design system, uh, it's the same idea, uh, but uh, the, the outside of you know, saving time on building the same components, it's also bring more consistency on government websites, so you can have a similar uh, components, but with unique look and feel. So let's 
break uh, the definition of art uh, in a different format. So we have design system equals reusable UI components plus the code of those components and guideline. Um, so uh, it's, you know, we can go a little bit more technical, but I have another example that is more straightforward. Uh, for UI components, uh, it's really just a piece of Lego, or it can be 10 pieces of Lego, that is reusable. Uh, you can have different size of components, and smaller amount of them, or larger amount of them, uh, but with the right guideline, uh, you can really building any pages that you need, uh, building uh, pretty much unlimited amount of uh, uh, UI, com UI pages you need it. So why, why design system is the right approach? <laughs> yeah, and I think obviously with this audience, you're probably already convinced of the value, so we're not gonna beat you over the head with it either, but uh, reusability, we're investing a lot of time and energy and resources already, so uh, why not make it something that's gonna be really, uh, let us get those the economies of scale, and for this client particularly, uh, they already invested very heavily in what they were using before, so if they were gonna make a big change, they wanted to make sure that, again, it was future-proofed, and there was really no reason to start from scratch. It's also a great way to uh, reduce your risk. You sort of learn from the mistakes and then put them in. Uh, I know documentation is always hard at the same time, but uh, we really see the value when it hasn't been done. <laughs> um, autonomy. So I thought this one was a bit counterintuitive. Uh, we're providing a system, and essentially we're trying to put uh, sort of those boundaries in place. But at the same time, I think any project, any piece of art, any website uh, is really uh, what it is because there are constraints. So as we saw, lots of teams were sort of going a bit rogue. Uh, they had a bit too much autonomy. But at the same time, during the user research phase, we heard again and again at what point uh, I'm trying to do these workarounds. I'm designing for the lower common denominator. And uh, again, the sites uh, from the user research that the client had conducted before hiring us and that we went a bit uh, further with the actual users. Uh, people were just not finding the information that they needed. So obviously design systems make sure that all of these different teams, particularly here it was uh, communications, marketing, and all those different content editors, who frankly had a lot of other things to do rather than maintain their websites, could have the freedom and autonomy not need to rely on that sort of central web team and send a ticket and say, hey, maybe I'll get that done in two weeks, but who knows, and uh, make sure that they again really had uh, their hands directly in there. And uh, as we said, again, obviously consistency, which is great. And I did want to mention, uh, because they had obviously the sort of hybrid brand architecture, there was a degree of sort of room to play, which I know uh, we'll get into in the, the demo portion. But uh, it's also uh, worth noting that consistency goes a long way in terms of yeah, how you present your face to the world and uh, really improving that overall perception, that experience. How can we, again, build trust, sort of communicate those values? And uh, despite having different mandates and sort of uh, organizational structures and priorities, at the same time, uh, this health authority was one organization. So we really saw design systems as one little brick that we could uh, put in there and uh, make sure, yeah, that this hybrid brand architecture can really shine. All right. Uh, let's give some example of uh, uh, consistency in design system. Uh, let's start with something very small. Let's start with a button. Uh, it's a very simple button. It has a background color. It has a text. Uh, and I mean, for designers in the room, uh, we can look a little bit closer. Okay, we will we'll start to look at the border radius, uh, the background color, the text style, uh, the text color. And then uh, for developers, you are, you know, we're going to care about the pattern between uh, the icons and how you look like without icon, the margin around the text. So there's about, you know, a dozen of attributes coming from a single button. And this is all the decision a designer has to make uh, on one single button. Uh, however, in reality, uh, one button style is never enough for a website. Uh, so there becomes a primary button. We have a secondary button and tertiary button. So those dozen of design decisions now multiply to three times. So that comes to like 30, 40 design decisions. And uh, we can see, you know, a developer now really is time for you to shine. A button is not a static element. It has a default state, hover state, focus state, inactive state, active state. And now thinking about the amount of coding you have to do for three buttons. Uh, we are human, uh, human make human arrows. So how do you make sure the padding on those 
buttons are identical to the others. How do we make sure the inactive color uh, same color thing with the others? So, you know, with all these options, all these design, uh, design decisions that you have to make, uh, since getting complicated right, right away. And that's just three buttons. And for a website project, we are talking about dozens of components or hundreds of components. So it's very easy that we get things off uh, or inconsistency that we found during the QA. That's just a lot of resource wasted during the process. So how? How do we, how do we want to make sure everything is getting the benefits from the design system. Let's look at this chart. Uh, design system is really a kind of a leveraging the atomic design system. Back to you know, 2000 or 2010, we are directly getting the elements to the UI pages. We will just hard code it, the background color, the text style, everything are just hard coded. And then that works for one page, for one landing page. And then when the page multiplies, you have 50 pages at government web website, you get hundreds, thousands of pages. We start to uh, introducing, I mean, it's been quite a trend. We start to use the atomic design system where we, we kind of grab the elements and uh, force them to molecules and then uh, use different format of molecules, combine them to a component, component to UI patterns, and then use those to create pages. And the design, the highlight of design system is without saying, you know, a background color is a hex code of certain color, we will replace all the primitive color uh, with design tokens, which is uh, essentially a CSS variables. Um, there are a lot more to talk about, uh, about design tokens, uh, but essentially uh, there are different strategies, different formats. You can use design tokens semantically or primitively. Uh, so we can get to that later on. Uh, so basically, uh, going back to the button example, uh, instead of saying we want a blue hex code color for the border, uh, we will just simply say uh, we will be using uh, border color prim primary, border color secondary in the CSS code. So uh, earlier in the uh, discovery process, uh, this, we are kind of looking for different solution, different type of design system that fit our client's need. Uh, we look into multi-brand design system this is where we can really leverage the benefit of design system. Uh, for example, it's, uh, what you're looking at is a hero and a navigation. They're all the same components, but with different attributes, uh, different text sizes, different alignment, uh, different padding, different spacing, background color, etc. Uh, so that's you know uh, the, the, we can max out the benefit of the design system with this uh, by using CSS variables and just applying different CSS variables on different theme. However, that requires just a lot of resource and designers to involve on every single theme. Now, our client has over 40 programs and sub -themes. and These, you know, at the time, all the website getting done, we are retired already. So, <laughs> is there any way we can get this more efficiently done? That's where we look into a cross brand design system. So, uh, in this concept, uh, we have a similar uh, com components that, are, that will be used in the design system. Uh, uh, then we set up a fixed set of design tokens that can be configured for different things. Uh, and about you know, which design token that we really need to be defined and need to be modified uh, in, the, in the design system. Uh, that's where our art director jumped in place. And uh, uh, here's some ex earlier discuss discovery for the uh, design system. So basically, the strategy was to use uh, different color tokens for different theme, uh, different icon style different thing and image selection. Um, I mean, with the previous example, a lot of design system, they will be, uh, you know, the, this design system, the, the result coming from it might look similar. So that's where we want to enable uh, image selection, the color selection, and different icon treatment that really uh, highlight the brand and kind of enable the brand expression for our client. Uh, so take example on the top, this is mental health services. Uh, so uh, we'll take 
their branding elements. In each brand, they have their uh, brand guideline, different brand expression. Uh, that's where we kind of extract them and uh, uh, you know target them to different audience group because essentially they are different websites. Uh, and so just by tweaking those uh, variables, these design tokens, we can kind of get a very different look and feel for each thing. So now we have a, a solid uh, fund fundamental for uh, design system. We have a strategy. How's the execution going to look like? So uh, the plan is, a, it, is this the plan to start a component library with a master theme and then to roll out the sub theme? No, because the designers can never design in the, in, from the back end. Like, hey, we need actual content. We need real user study. We need real user research to get a proper uh, design. So that's where we shifted the block a little bit. Uh, where we are starting a pilot site where we grab the actual uh, branding from uh, one of their uh, clients' website and start to design it from there. We do proper uh, U U UX study, we do proper research, user interview, uh, getting, the, getting the direction right on the first uh, pilot site and then convert the pile side to the master library, and then we can roll it out from there. Um, however, design system uh, isn't a project. It's not a waterfall project that we kind of just roll out over time. It's a product essentially. So it's a serving pro serving products that will be updated over time. So this is the actual roadmap. We have the first pile side converted into the master theme, and then branch out the theme. Uh, to different sub uh, Every time a sub that grow, uh, grows out, we take uh, some of the improvements, some of the component update, uh, maybe accessibility improvement, and we take them going back to the master thing and uh, keep going like that. Yeah, and uh, uh, here is uh, the, one of the demo of our uh, web, of the first pile side. Um, so, as you see, we really focusing on the image selection, the color, and uh, uh, the icon selection. So uh, this is where we uh, look into our, uh, the brand from the client's website and kind of extra those uh, brand attributes into a unique shape. And then uh, with color option and the right uh, shape combination, uh, those those brand attributes can be expressed by the icon selection. Uh, so essentially, they are the same component. They are the same. Uh, they are the same icons, but they, look, they have very different look and feel. So, hey, other than uh, the icons, uh, these the same treatment can be applied to other components uh, like uh, image color. Uh, we can have some people selling our image that is uh, uh, using the same idea. Uh, also some shape that can be uh, applied for the profile card. Um, besides the look and feel, uh, we also uh, spend a lot of uh, uh, time um, doing the UX studies. So uh, the website is information, of course, but we want to guide the user to find the right information. So there is a lot of interactive component other than just the, the, you know, the informational components. Uh, take this as, is, as an example. This additional link uh, is really just helping uh, the page, the, uh, the users to find the right information uh, right off the bat. And so um, here's another one that is uh, for them to uh, not only look for information, also can uh, complete certain tasks for their uh, for their need. And uh, so now. Um, the website is, uh, the design system is ready. The website has been launched. What do we do next? Uh, guideline as part of the design system. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what we've been working on. Uh, we have this, uh, uh, what we call style guide, but it's also a brand uh, design system guideline that is for uh, designers, developers, and content editors. Uh, we will let them know 
what you uh, what you can do with this component, what you should do with this component, what you shouldn't do with this component. Uh, so uh, we have about 50 pages of this, and for each component, there's like clear guidelines. So uh, this enables the content editor to roll out all the rest of pages with the right components. Yeah. And again, I think uh, the value and design system is uh, very uh, clear net, but obviously uh, you want to have that disclaimer too. Uh, be careful what you're getting into as well because you definitely don't want to bite off more than you can chew. And again, the whole the reason for our design system is to make sure that it can be reused. So just a couple of uh, warnings uh, before uh, you get uh, too uh, uh, enthusiastic also. Um, a design system is really not like set it and forget it as Joe can attest. Obviously, uh, just that documentation alone is an ongoing effort and uh, we're looking at ways to improve it and make it more usable. Nothing is worse than documentation that gets sort of a PDF and then put away and never actually uh, looked at. So uh, yeah, it's systems are like anything and they need love, they need attention uh, and they're by nature dynamic. Uh, so again, whether you're talking about uh, different user needs that pop up, components that maybe, again, there's nothing existing that really is going to fit. How do you sort of take a decision? What are the criteria to sort of say, okay, this is something we're going to invest in and then push it up uh, to be used across the system? So uh, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, governance just because it's always the, uh, <laughs> sometimes it's an afterthought, but uh, what we really like to try to do is build it into the process already so to get people used to it. So it's not that kind of, but we launched, it's great. I don't want to have to think about any more races and all that stuff. Uh, so the two models we generally start with, it's really something that's uh, a bit more centralized where you sort of have one team that's really, again, responsible for making those decisions, for consulting with all the different entities, and then uh, based on what they can find, saying, okay, great, I think we're going to uh, develop this, test it, and then start pushing it out so it can be used. Whereas you can have something that's also a bit more distributed depending on, again, where your resources are allocated and uh, the level of, I guess, uh, maturity uh, within each of the centralized programs. So again, it's something also where if you're going centralized, obviously it's nice because you're really going to get coherence more on, not a lockdown approach, but something that, again, you're not going to let anything uh, fall through the cracks. Uh, but the other side of it is that it can take a lot longer. So by the time a user need is identified, it goes through the processes, you push it up, it sort of gets uh, debated in the community or whatever it's going to be, uh, and then it comes back down. Uh, maybe uh, that need is kind of like, well, we found a workaround or we couldn't wait that long. So obviously a distributed environment is really nice because you're sort of getting that immediate on the ground feedback. And if you're able to sort of uh, define again, what are the boundaries for decisions that can sort of be taken at that level and actually deployed, whether uh, within a subset of sites or to the entire system, and uh, really uh, working with things that are, again, going to be a bit more immediate. But again, uh, the risk is that if uh, one or a couple programs don't accurately really capture the brand, or you have, again, a marketing team that, uh, for whatever reason it is, really needs to enforce that coherence, uh, you're going to maybe open yourself up to uh, unforeseen uh, issues and, uh, again, that lack of consistency that we're trying to, uh, trying to avoid. Um, there's also, though, a third way, and uh, oftentimes we'll sort of, uh, again, recommend this if, again, a client or a project sort of is set up to uh, really support something that's hybrid. So again, it's all about thinking how can we right size it, what's going to be the sort of threshold uh, for whether it's uh, the impact of the component or how many sites are going to be affected or, or whatever the criteria that are going to work for you. But something that, again, gives you that flexibility to move a bit quicker and not have to sort of wait for a big entity. But at the same time, for those uh, elements that are really going to be super important and, um, again, uh, more highly, um, uh, I guess, critical to your brand expression, those are the ones that you're going to really say that's a decision for central and we're going to make sure that we again uh, do our homework look at it from all uh, from all uh, angles before we're actually going to go into a uh, design a uh, build test and deploy and uh, we like to also use this sort of chart and again there's no hard and fast answers either but at least if you can sort of look at the different criteria it can sort of help you thinking uh, asking those questions is a design system going to be right for my organization and again, really trying to situate yourself, uh, what type of business model do you have? 
So it's something where, again, we're talking about something that's quite unified already, the products, the ecosystem. Uh, there's not a lot of variation, or you're really more on the side where the portfolio is just, uh, again, night and day, a lot of different things. This is one where, uh, with this client, maybe we should have uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> woken up a bit earlier. It was super diverse and varied, but at the same time, in combination with the other factors, it can still be the right choice. But again, you're gonna maybe spend a bit more time upfront and in investing in very bespoke and in-depth discovery processes to really understand, uh, as Joe was explaining, uh, what are the different, not just uh, user needs, uh, sort of priorities of each individual program, but uh, how deep can we go into an individual brand expression. Uh, next, obviously, resources. It's a very uh, a straightforward one, too. Uh, do you have a lot of people or not so many people? Uh, do you have the money to do it or not? Because obviously, it's going to be a consideration. It's not, again, a one-time investment, but something that you have to keep uh, feeding the beast. Uh, speed of change. So uh, how reactive, uh, how interested is your organization uh, interested in being really, uh, you know, on the cutting edge of technology, being able to sort of, uh, again, uh, not move fast and break things, but uh, be able to deploy and sort of show that you're uh, staying uh, ahead of the game? Or, again, is the rate of change uh, less frequent? Uh, you're okay with some stability. You're not uh, launching new features and functionalities uh, all the time. And uh, you can sort of afford to say, okay, we're going to take it a, a bit slower, in which case, obviously, a design system with the right governance uh, can be a great fit. And uh, last but not least, uh, change is hard. And uh, again, uh, you can't get around it at the same time. It's going to depend on the degree or the, the type of support that you have from whether the C-suite, the executives, those buy-in. And we can really see that also in large distributed environments where people naturally have flexibility because it's hard for smaller teams to keep track of everything that's going on. And in this case, over 26,000 people. Uh, so your leadership really has to believe, understand the value, and it can always be a bit risky to sort of say, we're doing it because the agency thought it was a good idea, but those people in-house don't really necessarily have the language to articulate it in their own words and for it actually to be a message that's going to be passed on to all these individual teams with their comms and marketing and lots of priorities. So again, if it's weak or inconsistent, really maybe think twice or see what are strategies that we could do to sort of reinforce that buy-in, uh, speak the client's language a bit more and make sure that even non-technical folks are able to say, uh, we're doing this because in terms of the bottom line, we're gonna save this much on web development over the next years, we're gonna recruit this part of investment whatever the argument that's going to work uh, for your organization will be to hopefully get to uh, something that's strong and sustained because uh, I think this one is um, not that it's overlooked but I think that it's not necessarily always given the attention or we can tend to rest in the sort of generic uh, it's for the greater good without actually drilling down and saying why is it for the greater good for us in which context and really that individual level like always the what's in it for me yeah. but we did it <laughs> yeah, so uh, what, what's next? Uh, we have launched the, the first PAL site and have converted them to the master theme. Uh, we are in the process of launching of the second theme. Uh, just during this, uh, as we said, the benefit of design system, so we don't have to rebuild these components all over again. So we can spend more resources and more time on user study and user research. Uh, that's where um, the sub is is a, a very different audience, so we have found a lot of opportunity of improvement, either you know, a component that can be um, applied to different purposes or access or accessibility improvement. Uh, so we have uh, quite a journey ahead of us. Uh, on uh, one of the great examples from uh, UK, uh, yeah, U UK government, they have this roadmap, and uh, they, so they already identified their issue of their design system, and they have this roadmap planning now for uh, the future update and what uh, the opportunity of improvement that has been identified. And uh, just throughout the journey, I mean, it's uh, it's been a uh, a great journey for us. Jupo um, is an open source community. That's why we are sharing our uh, learning, our process over here. So. Uh, my recommendation for the design system is really uh, we can start small. Uh, we don't have to aim for a hundred component uh, design library right off the bat. We can start just with a few, uh, with less few, less uh, page template, uh, UI patterns, uh, just to get the user to buy in faster and roll out the website faster. 
and then uh, as long as you know the, the, the component they are future they're more future proof uh, it's very easy uh, we can start to use adding more components on the next generation on the next version uh, and for for designers uh, when we design a component really making sure the component is not just being used one time it has to be adaptable component that are flexible to being used at multiple purpose. Uh, so for example, a news car. We don't, don't design a news car that only being displayed once on the homepage, uh, but rather to keep them consistent across all different pages. And lastly, documentation. Documentation is part of the design system on the guideline on the, on the guideline part, but it's not just something we do at the end. Uh, for for a different scale of design system, we have uh, multiple designer working on the same design systems, multiple developer working on the same design system. Their onboarding, offboarding, uh, there so there need to be kind of a centralized one source of choose that can be can document all the different changes. Uh, we use storyboard, but there are also other tools uh, like zero height around the market that really just help bridging the gap between designer and developers. And for, also for content editors, they need to understand uh, what has been up, updated on the designer, uh, on the design components, and uh, how, what new components they can use for their features. So, that's uh, much the end of our presentation. Are you all gonna go buy anything? Yeah. Uh, that's our co-founder, Suzanne. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you. So much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, the first thing that when you started talking about the discovery, I was thinking about the fact that the previous version of the site, you said that there was, it was very locked down, like there was an about, there's uh, services. Um, so how did you go about like um, casting out the net for what the components should be if the previous sites were so limited in what they offered in terms of like a digital vocabulary? Well, in terms of the information architecture, it was really a, a label issue. Like, I think they just had in their heads, like, if we're going to do this, it's just going to be done once, and everyone's going to have the same label, no matter what you're talking about. So again, I think it was a conversation they were ready to hear, and obviously, I can maybe let you talk more about the navigational components and the other ones. But uh, we saw at the beginning, it was just a very text-based site. And so it was one of those things where, like, um, we're hearing so much great stuff about your mission and your values and I mean frankly the people that you serve whether it's the citizens the healthcare providers but none of that was coming through a SharePoint text-based site <laughs> so I think that gave us I do a lot more of a interesting as you say uh, the components that could really better articulate that so if you want to talk about the, the visual process there <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, for, for the visual part, uh, their, their whole site was developed many years ago, and the, the design approach has been changed a lot over years. So we had to look into benchmarking on uh, more of the modern site and what other people do on their navigation, you know, on, on how they structure the site. So. And did you use um, like a temp? I know there's templates that exist for design systems. Did you use one of those to kind of start with a standard set of components? Or did yeah. You start so we uh, we we kind of we look a lot of, we look for we benchmark a lot of uh, different design system. There's a lot of open source one you can pay to for a few, uh, but essentially what we the idea was kind of to start with a template, but we end up at, at, we eventually end up building our uh, own design system from ground up because uh, it's different. They have something pretty rigid already, so well, for us, it's easier if we just start everything ourselves with a different uh, component set, different design tokens that can be really benefit the project along, on the long way. Any uh, questions from the audience? Uh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful photographs, and in the past, I've perceived that people who produce photographs sometimes are not as involved in where they end up. And things like the layout where you've got the headline and then the text and a person who's not understanding responsive design, you can get all kinds of very unfortunate layout results. 
but how, how did you work with the, the photographers or the source of the photography to make sure that it was the proper, um, you know, behavior? When yeah, it was yeah, for sure. So uh, that's part, you know, that's where uh, the, the part of the guideline really kind of kind of come to handy. So we will give recommendation of what type of image you should select, uh, what type of uh, it should it be a, a poetry or human focus or subject focus. And uh, uh, it's just a lot of uh, documentation that either not just help the uh, designer to find the right image, also help the content editor to find the right image. So you would say like this proportion, the, the figure needs to fit and there needs to be this yeah. much that can... Yeah, and as part of the design process, we also do a lot of uh, kind of these sandbox testing as well. So play around with different imagery and making sure the component works. Yeah. In that same vein, um, I know we're talking about components and design system, but I noticed the hero image was really large, which I as a designer like because I can fit an image, like, you know, we update, I work with USDA, so I update USDA.gov frequently, and when we did our redesign, like, the developers wanted it really skinny, like, a lot of people wanted it skinny, but I knew it was going to be hard to find images where the copy space could fit, like, it's just, it's a tug of war, but people who work on the front end and doing, you know, content updating. Anyway, I could go down right now. Let, <laughs> let me not do that. Where I'm going with this question is, because we're in the middle of a redesign now, and it was that tug of war between, do we want the hero image big, do we want it small, and we ended up in this place. I mean, I'm indifferent about it, but I wonder, you. You. did you have that experience when you went through this? And by the way, I love how the hero image looks. <laughs> I did think the same thing about, wow, great use of making sure there was enough copy space behind the imagery. So um, just wonder what yeah. was your struggle with that, if there was any on uh, we, the We totally hear you, we totally yeah. hear you. It's, it's the same struggle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but my recommendation is, uh, it, and frankly, when we design a website, it's not just for designer, for content editor, for it's it's designed for the user. So it's always the best to test real, 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 with real user with real data and see how you know the click rate and see where with the heat map where they look at the most. Uh, so that's where that's why we want to launch the first site first and then. Uh, then you know, start to looking at the, those data, start to look at those results later on, and make improvement. So that's that's the best part of design system. You are not fixed into a, a component design. Yeah. Uh, and second part, of, I just want to say the product was beautiful, just exquisite. The website, like I was like, like just clean and beautiful. So amazing work. Thank you. We're, we're working on the website. He said, "Looks great. You launched the website, but I spent too long in the hospital last last year. But long story short, I got bored and I started going around and taking photos of like different communications in the hospital, like the digital signage. They were advertising like driving boat racing for employees, and then there's like advertisements about washing your hands, and then like." Um, all kinds of other communications about health outbreaks or how to get other services or, you know, just so much messaging in the hospital. And I'm wondering to what degree you think a design system can also help other forms of communication for a big health network. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, um, for a lot of design system, when we when we design, you know, picking the color, picking the layout, it's not just for web. Yeah, most of the time, it's it's what we kind of abstract from their brand, from the brand guideline. So uh, the same principle doesn't just apply on the website itself. Uh, we can give recommendation. We can give uh, example of you know this is a better postal layout. This is where user look at the most. And this is where they can find the barcode, or you know, in here it's a CTA, it's a button, but in the print it's a it's a QR code where they can scan. So the same principle, not just apply on this digital screen, also on print. Yeah, and not to be facetious either, but I wonder when we were doing the Children's Hospital website as well. There are a lot of times I was like, are we using the website to compensate for poor wayfinding in the physical building? A lot of focus on maps, a lot of focus on where is this clinic, how can I contact it? So it was also a bit of that challenge. We know we had obviously we're, we're a web agency. We're not going to go in and do the industrial design, but at the very least, and again, I think it also hit the the fact like mobile responsive, and I have experience 
about to give birth and couldn't get into the hospital because it was in the middle of the night and the doors don't open if you don't know the special like side entrance of the garage. So I would appreciate a bit more of a support on my mobile. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you had a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you had the Nathan Curtis quote there that you know design system is a product, and it's an interesting. I mean, I've done this a bit on the other side of this where I've invented a design system. And so I was curious what your client's expectation is for the ongoing life of that design system. Is it are they expecting that to generally be touched and, and committed to by vendors, by maybe multiple vendors? Is this an ongoing relationship that you have with the client, or do they have a do they have a systems team that's actually going to be owning that? Like what what is that? Yeah. It's an ongoing relationship in the sense that, again, uh, they had just so many websites and uh, we knew they wanted a, a nice focused discovery for each one too, so already we're sort of there for, let's say, the long term to make sure we're accompanying them and making sure that we're scaling the design system as the user research comes in. But as your other question, they're switching from SharePoint to Drupal and they were aware internally that, okay, we need to upscale a little bit already and then make sure that, I think they hired a dedicated, not one if not two Drupal developers too, and we're taking a very much sort of embedded approach with them. So with our developers, a lot of that knowledge transfer is happening already. It's happening with content editors too. So I can't speak necessarily to uh, how they expect perhaps other vendors in the future uh, to work with them. But at the very least, uh, we see that commitment, at least from that central web strategy team, that we need to make sure that we can own this and that we can use it. And again, that it comes down to documentation too. If we need to onboard new people, at least we're confident in our abilities to, to do so. Um, yeah, almost as a follow-up um, to that question, I have the exact same question. Um, but just the shift from, uh, I guess, how some client teams handle design systems, um, and even um, 